Welcome, everybody. On behalf of Loud Liberty Baptist Church, my name is Lennon, and we uh, have our praise band right here um, um, by way of uh, Amen Baptist Church. As always, we always give our thanks and our appreciation to them for making time to do this. And so, but before I do that, um, there are a couple announcements that I want all of us to be aware of. Next week, we will have for the first time Sister Kristen giving, sharing the message next week. So, yeah, please, if you can make time for that, please. It's just, it's a, it's a big thing for us, and it's kind of a, the way we think about how, um, how we think, how high we think of of women in our church, and how we would encourage them to, to, to step forward and just kind of take the lead. And well, not I say, but just more just sharing things. Uh, sharing the message that's on the heart that God's given them. So if you can, just, um, yeah, join us next week as well. So, but uh, for today, we have Brother Chance who's going to be sharing the message as well. So um, with that being said, um, we're going to hand it out to the Praise and Worship Band as they're going to prepare our hearts and just kind of set the mood and uh, set, the, set the tone as we um, go into this Wednesday night. So with that being said, I hand it to you all. Everybody could please stand up and join us in praise and worship. If you know the song, please sing it. Today we have our special guest, Claire Bear. She's going to be joining us on stage, and we're excited. We hope you guys enjoy. Because of you, Jesus is all. 
Cause there's no one besides you Forever the hope in my heart Alright, this next song is an Adele song But it's important to understand that I sing this song Because it reminds me of It reminds me of God because When I'm singing it, it's like a message that God would give to me um, So just like think about it like that as you're singing along. Hopefully, you know the song. Tommy says, I go hungry. It reminds me of like when Jesus was stuck in the desert and had to go, I don't know how many days or nights without food, but it's just like one of those lines that reminds me of just how much he loves us. So. on us and if it is I pray that we reach out to you for help and uh, pray that our your love is uh, constantly on our minds in Jesus name I pray Amen
Is it here? Oh. Oh. Um. You sit here. Okay. Ah, thank you. Setting up the stage is a very delicate process. Thank you guys, thank you for your patience. Um, and thank you again for your time to spend with us this Wednesday. And I am very encouraged to see the, out, uh, the outpouring of support here today. So without further ado guys, let's uh, go in the word of God. Dear Father God, Father God, thank you so much for today. Father, thank you for all that you have done. Father, um, it's a beautiful day, Father, in your house. And it's a beautiful day to be in fellowship with uh, like-minded, God-centered, Christ-focused uh, friends and family, Father. Father, be with me and also be with my little helpers here to um, read your word and and to share your word. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So I, I like this first slide. It, it's a slide that um, talks about three churches. One being in the middle is, is the mother church of all of, mostly the Fort Smith, Laotian Christians, the majority of them. Um, but yeah, it, it's a picture that I hadn't seen in a while, that's Grand Avenue Baptist Church, and that spawned two churches here in this area, but the focus of this talk is that we are one of the same, we are family. So, next slide. So, there's a story, I want to share with you guys a story about a couple who love each other, who has gone through a lot um, together, God bless them with this big family. A uh, family that's bonded in love, respect, sisters and brothers who have so much to share, so much to, to learn from each other. And the, but one day, one day, there was a small disagreement between the two uh, people that gotten so big in their eyes to a point that they got divorced. So one parent took one uh, kid, the other parent took another kid, and then... They let years, precious years go by. Eventually, the, 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 the kids didn't know each other, uh, didn't, didn't get to know each other, rather. And sadly, this wedge starts to separate further and further to a point that their children's children didn't know their own cousins. But then, eventually, with the grace of God, one day, God warmed their hearts to bring them back together, to be, to be able to sit in the same table, to jump jail together. And then, you know, so now there's a sense of celebration, love. But, you know, as, as happy as they can be together, jumping that jail, they know that precious times had been lost. Precious times that that allowed their children and their grandchildren to drift apart. Can't be taken back, because it's gone. But there's a happy ending to my story, which I will uh, reiterate uh, at the end of my talk. So, um, with your Bible, please turn to our main verse, is in 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapters 3. Verses three, uh, 8 through 12, and we have Austin. Austin's going to help read this for us today. So, Austin, would you go ahead? Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, 
Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and lips from decisive speech. You must turn from you must turn from evil and do good. You must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against all those who do evil. Thank you. Thank you, Austin. You know, I got to say that our time together, our time together on Wednesday is a time that I love and cherish. And let me start off by, by, by acknowledging the, the amen group here that I really love and respect you guys. I mean, my time being at your church, I've seen you guys grow. Uh, brother Jai is like a little brother to me. And I've seen Victoria, Lynn, and Carlos, I've seen you guys grow and maturate into the young men and women that you guys are. And I'm proud to, to be able to stand next to you and say that I know you guys. Thank you. And, you know, likewise, I am committed and excited on my calling here at Lao Liberty. Working alongside Lennon and the young men back there, Samuel, Timothy, and Jonathan, and also Kristen and, and, and your young ladies, I, I am excited and am ready to tackle this ministry together. And guys, you know, in our time together, on our Wednesday nights, or in, in our time of serving the Lord, working together, is when we bring out the best in all of us, in all of our abilities, is when we are united in this worship to bring glory to God. And when we're in this construct, when we're in this assembly of unity, I sometimes forget that we are from two different churches, separated from two, dis two different um, addresses. But, you know, but deep in my heart, deep in my heart, we are still one family. And if we track our history back, if we track our history back, we were under the same address. Uh, the, the following, uh, the, the previous slide. And that address is Grand Avenue Baptist Church. Now, for you youth who don't know the history, back in the 80s when we first came to this country, uh, the good folks at uh, Grand Avenue Baptist Church took us in, took care of us, introduced the faith to us, and they gave us a little building back there. It's called the Annex Building Number 2. I remember uh, fondly Sunday um, afternoon after we come to church, um, some of the ladies would make like little um, gifts, uh, chips in a bag for us who came to church. And those were my fondest memories. And then at times, me and my little cohorts of little, little uh, hood rats, we would skip Bible school and go to um, the gas station down the street, okay? And those are my fondest memories. And, you know, if we track our history back, that's the history of unity, of love, of respect, of joy. But sadly, sometimes differences, not in theology, nor differences in doctrine, but differences in personal agendas, personal uh, preferences causes cracks in this bond, this foundation, to eventually lead us to where we are today. And, and you know, please hear me out. I'm not here to harp on old scars or um, bring back pain of the past. But if we think about it, the truth is, is that we are one family. We were one family, but going forward, we still have that ability to be, again, one family. A chance to be a family in a sense of ministerial relationship as a family. A relationship that when we come together, we are in Christ. That's the one family sense that I'm talking about. And despite being isolated by four walls, and despite being separated by 1.6 miles from each other, it is in this ministerial relationship that we are a family. 
that we can again be a family. And when I see each and every one of the youth, and it, it, it touched me because I worked with these group for a while. Now I have a privilege to work with this group, so my foot is in both footings. That's why it, 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 it kind of leaves a sour taste in my mouth when somebody says, oh, it's this group's youth. Is this group's youth. But in reality, we should be called the youth in Christ. Amen? Amen? And there should be no walls to separate us. There should be no distance, no address to separate us. When we come together, we are stronger than we are apart. And that is why, guys, I am so blessed to be working alongside Brother Jai from this group and Brother Lennon back there from our group so that when we come together, we're corroborating. We're doing a collaborative ministry together between the two churches. And it's people like, like us who are like-minded, Christ-centered, Christ-focused, that sometimes I dream this unimaginable dream, and I have this hope, this unimaginable hope that we can be united as a Laotian church in the city of Fort Smith. If you think about our spiritual growth, if we were to come together, I don't think Fort Smith could contain us. But if we're separated, then we are not as strong as we can be. Now, if you agree with me, guys, church is not a wall. It's not a building. Church is not something that you go to or something that you do. It's not a, sp a space that confines us. Church is who we are. We are a family, a family of believers, right? But we often hear people say that, oh, this is my church. This is your church. Eh, it, it might be your building, but it's not your church. Your, the church is God's church. The building may be yours, but it's God's church. So going forward tonight, guys, when, when I mention church family, I'm not talking about one church or another. I'm talking more or less a body of Christ, of believers, who, like we just read, like Austin just read, who's like-minded, sympathetic, loving to one another, compassionate, and humble-minded. Just like what we read. But you know, however, family... Just like any family, we all know that there'll be some issues that will wedge us, just like the story that I told you in the beginning. And there'll be circumstances that will test our bond. And just like a family, we sometimes struggle to get along with one another. So do churches. Because every church, just like every family, experiences conflicts from time to time. Different personalities, soft personality conflicts with the stronger personality. Feelings get hurt. Grudges are held. Resentment are obtained. Because why? People, churches are made up of different people, and people are not perfect. But God, he commands us to love one another. But sometimes, you know, truth be told, it's, it's very hard to do. But God knows ahead of time. That's why he commissioned the apostle Peter to write this letter to the vast churches in the Roman Empire. And he's also writing this to us today. Now, as what Austin just read, I want to just highlight three things that, that, that just kind of jumps out at me. I mean, I think there might be more, but I think three things tonight that we should focus on to remind us that we are one family in Christ. Okay? The first thing that... I think the Apostle Peter wants us to really focus on is that we need to be compassionate to one another. Now, the dictionary, compassionate is a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for, an, for another who is stricken by misfortunes, accompanied by a strong sense, a strong desire to alleviate that suffering. But there... The last part of this is something that I want us to hone in on, is this, this accompanied strong desire to do something about 
your compassion, okay? Compassion is not just a heartfelt, warm, fuzzy feeling that you have for somebody's misfortune. Compassion is that feeling accompanied by this strong desire to do something about it. You know, in, in, it's interesting, Greek, in the Greek language, there's this word. It's called splanknizamine, or the way you, other people pronounce it is splanknizamai. And splankni <coughs> means gut. Splankni uh, put more focus on visceral, gut, entrails, if you will. And this word puts this emphasis on this pit of your stomach feeling you can't get rid of. Is this strong um, ache and pain in your gut, inner core. So this word, it makes sense because compassion is a heartfelt sympathy for somebody, but you just can't just turn it off. It just nags in your, from your heart to your gut, and it, it just eats at your gut. You want to do something about it. And that's what this word e exemplifies, right? So it, it's a strong word. It's not a very subtle eh, word. It's a strong word that, that demands something to be done. Visceral, gut-wrenching is emotionally, physically, and decisively. You got to do something about it type of feeling. Now, Bible, Sunday school question, who in the Bible exemplifies this word to the T? Anybody? Jesus. Jesus. Because the Bible says this in Mark chapters 1, verses 40 to 41. If you have your Bible, let's turn to Mark chapters 1, verses 40 to 41. And uh, Kendall is going to read this for us. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you, are willi if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And then also, if we turn to uh, Mark chapter 6, verses 34, oh. Jesus also exemplifies compassion also. Go ahead, Kendall. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat. And he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. That's compassion. Jesus had compassion. And what did he do? On both instances, he did something about it. He didn't turn the other eye and say, oh, you know, I feel, aw, 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 that's cute. Or, aw, I'm so, uh, that, that's, that's sad. And walked away. No, he had compassion and he did something about it. And according to Peter, that's one of the key ingredients for us to transform our ministry into a big family, a one family of a ministerial relationship between the two churches. It's because when we show compassion, we have this warm, compassionate feeling, and then we are commanded, oh, we have to do something because it's in my gut. I can't get rid of it to, uh, feeling. So we have to do something about it. So when a man needs something done, we have compassion over here at La Liberty, and we just can't say, oh, we got to do something about it. And amen, when La Liberty needs something done or something has to be done, or if we have compassion for them, that we just can't say, oh, we got to do something about it. this gut-wrenching feeling of wanting to do something. That's compassion. That kind of action is something that we should do as Christians. But sometimes we, we, we have this calculated cold shoulder feeling to one another. We shouldn't do that. As brothers and sisters in one family under Jesus Christ, we should have compassion for one another. And furthermore, Peter then goes to tell us this other thing that we should have. And I think that we should be composed. Now, be composed, what is that? Let me give you a little story about this woman. She was bitten by this one wild dog that's rabied, right? Mad dog. And then she goes see the doctor. The doctor says, ah, I think you're not going to make it. So you better 
write your will and make peace with yourself. So she grabs the doctor's pen and grabs his paper and starts writing, writing. One page, two page, and the doctor goes up and says, what are you writing? You, you have a lot on your mind. She says, no, 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 I'm not writing no will. I'm writing, name, I'm writing down the names of the people who I want to go and bite, so I'll take them down with me. <laughs> that is revenge, okay? The desire to get even seems to be embedded in our sinful nature. But Christians, we are called to be composed, relax, take a deep breath. As Christians, we should tell ourselves, you know, I'm better than that. I should just relax. Let me compose myself first. Because 1 Peter 3.9, that what Austin just read, he says that don't repay evil with evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, what do you do? You pay them back with the blessing. And that's what we're called to do. Turn the other face when they slap us. Turn the other cheek, rather, I'm sorry. Because when we do that, we will inherit a blessing. Because when somebody hurts you, our first instinct in our sinful nature is to hurt them back, right? How many times when somebody says something sarcastically to you, you have to say something back? Laos terms, we, we atkan, you know. Uh -huh. Somebody says something, way, And you have to at them right there because if you go home not retaliating, you feel so bad. You, anybody ever feel like that? I am as guilty as the next person because somebody comes up and, 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 and smarts me if I don't at them right there, I go home, I'm like, oh, it eats me alive. But I have since gotten used and, 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 and just, oh, Jesus, help me, help me. We have to be composed as Christians just because when Christians fight amongst themselves, nobody wins. Because there's an old African proverb. It goes, when two elephants fight, the grass is the one that hurts, that suffers. Because when two elephants who's, what, 16,000 pounds go at it, there's going to be some collateral damage. And typically, the grass is the thing that gets damaged. Likewise, when we're building a church, when two, three egos People go, go and add it. The people that get hurt are the members. And we've seen churches get divided by, not by doctrine or principle, but by the color of the carpet or the size of the building or what music is being played. They, get, they split churches over those little things. And that's why Peter, he encourages to keep our composure but don't retaliate. When somebody steps on your toes, go and tell them how much they mean to you and tell them how this is making you feel. And more than likely, they didn't mean to step on your toes. You took it the wrong way. But if they did take it the if they did what they did to hurt you, it's fine. You let go and you let God take care of them. You bless them. And God will then bless you. Because the Bible says this very important verse that I like in uh, Romans chapters 12, verses 18. So if you have your Bible, turn to Romans chapters 12, verse 18. Parker, can you help us with this verse, please? If it is possible as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And the word that, that just jumps out at me on this verse is you. You. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, you. If I read this as me, live with peace. Don't wait for the next person who wronged you to come and apologize. They may not. But if it depends, if it's possible, don't wait. You. Whether you're right or wrong, make peace. As Christians, it depends on us to live out our Christ-like heart. 
and action to live in peace. It brings me to Paul, uh, Peter's last part in dealing with family and going forward in, in our ministerial relationship is we need to be conciliatory, conciliatory. And what does that mean? It means to help to, for us to help facilitate reconciliation. In other words, to be peacemakers. To be peacemakers. Because in, in, in Peter's uh, last part of his uh, verse, in 1 Peter chapters 3, verses 10 through 11, Miss Brittany there is going to read this again of what um, Austin just read. Go ahead, Brittany. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Thank you. Thank you. Whoever would love life and would see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speeches. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. I like this last part in verse 12. If you follow me there. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, the church, we need a lot of this conciliatory type of Christian. We need more peacemakers. There's two types of people in a church, I really think. There's the thermometer type of people. And then there's the thermostat type of people. The thermometer, thermometer is the type of people, or if you think what a thermometer does is if the, hot, if the room is hot, the thermometer will tell you it's hot. That's all it does. If the room is cold, the thermometer will tell you that the room is cold. The thermostat is a different. You walk in the room, the room is hot. You go to the thermostat and crank it down to about 68. The, the thermostat will make the room cold. Likewise, if you walk into a cold room, you go to the thermostat and turn the thermostat to 78. The thermostat will make that room cold hot and warm and cozy. So thermostats are peacemakers. They change the atmosphere, the environment of the room in which they go into. Whereas thermometers, they just reflect the room. Have you guys ever seen anybody, people, walk into the room? Just the sheer presence calms the room. If there's disagreements, arguments, somebody walks in the room, their presence, just like, wow. Ain't me, but, but I've seen people like that. And that's a thermostat type of Christian, thermostat type of people. And we need more of that in our churches. And God wants more of that in his church and out in his world. So as a family, guys, that takes a lot of spiritual maturity to be a loving family. And we have, if we allow ourselves to take in what Peter is telling us, to be compassionate, to be composed, and to be a peacemaker, then our bond between our two churches, who are Again, brothers and sisters from a mother church will go on. And I, and I want to close with this, is that, you know, belonging to a, God's family, it's, it, it's a precious gift. We are family. And a church family is a body of Christ, unified in him, through him, for him. We're one in faith, in love, and in him, in Christ. We can't change our past. We can't. 
we can't change our past. Sometimes God made it the way it is so that now in our time, we could reflect on our past mistakes, reflect back on, on our history, and come together and decide where we're going to go forward. We were one family, and we still have an opportunity to be one family. So, you know, the leadership of both churches, there have been precious time that had been wedged between both churches. There have been precious time that has been drifted away. But going forward, in our collaborative ministry, in our uh, ministerial relationship, we can once again, through compassion, through being composed, through being a peacemaker, we can still be a family in our ministerial relationship between the two churches. And, you know, back to my story of this couple they decided to take their children or their, you know, back to church. And I'm not saying one church or another. They took their family back to church. God's church. Whether it's in one address or the other. And when there were times when the two churches can come together when the mom and the dad, they bring their kids together to catch up on, on lost times, to reconciliate those times. And over time, the children got to know each other. Grandkids, grandkids start to know who their cousins are. And this family became big. And in reference to our churches, we can be a force to be reckoned with in terms of doing God's work together. Then we are divided. So we have an opportunity in the future to come together with love, respect, compassion, and not just the all. But the awe and then this gut feeling that you cannot go on without doing something about it. And if we decide to go back to our different addresses and our four walls, fine. That's just material things. But when we come together, when there's an opportunity for us to come together, we come together as one family. So in closing, let's, let's, let's do this. The amen group. Let me get you guys to stand up. The La Liberty group, youth, let me get you guys to stand up. La Liberty, these are your brothers and sisters. Amen. That's your brother and sister. Okay? Don't forget that. All right? So let's all rise. Let's close this out. Dear Father God, Father God, thank you so much, Father, for uh, this time. Thank you so much for being in our hearts. And Father, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share what's in my heart. Father God, thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for giving us the hope of everlasting life in you, Father. Father, as I look out in this crowd... I see brothers and sisters who has a chance now to come together through compassion, through being composed, through the process of reconciliation in you, Father, so that we could be one, a united Laos Christian that's going to be a force to be reckoned with in this city of Fort Smith. Father, I lift up Brother Lennon and Brother Jai as, 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 as they lead this group in unity. 
in ministerial relationship that is built on you. To be one in that sense, Father, as a family. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you for those out there watching. Thank you, guys. Thank you.